FY24 earnings conference call hosted by ICICI Securities. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode, and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchtone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Aniruddha Joshi from ICICI Securities. Thank you and over to you, sir. Yeah. <clears throat> Thanks, Rayo. Uh, at ICICI Securities, it is our pleasure to host Q2 FY24 earnings conference call of Havels India Limited. We have with us senior management represented by Mr. Anil Rai Gupta, Chairman and Managing Director, Mr. Rajesh Kumar Gupta, Whole Time Director, Finance and Group CFO, Mr. Amit Kumar Gupta, Whole Time Director, and Mr. Rajiv Goel, Executive Director. We congratulate the management for a strong set of numbers in tough macro environment and remain positive uh, on the company due to its established sub-segmentation strategy and modes like brands and distribution. Now I hand over the call to the management for initial comments on the quarterly performance and then we will open the floor for question and answer session. Thanks and over to you, sir. Thank you, Anurag. Good morning, everybody, and thank you for attending the call today. Hope you would have reviewed the results by now. The second quarter witnessed uh, softness in the consumer demand. However, infrastructure and housing demand led to a healthy growth in B2B categories like industrial switch cares, professional lighting, and power tables. Loy continues to maintain its growth moment. Lighting business delivered decent volume growth. However, price, price deflation in LED impacted the revenues. Festival calendar shift has led to spillover of some consumer demand from Q2 to Q3 in relevant categories. We remain quite positive about the upcoming festive season in the second half. Contribution margins improved across segments year on year. Commodity price normalization and product cost led initiatives will drive further margin improvement. Despite consumer demand headwinds, we continue to invest in our manufacturing, product portfolio, and talent pool for a sustainable growth trajectory. We can now move to Q&A and &A. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking questions. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. To ask questions, please press star and one. The first question is from the line of Natasha Jain from Nirmal Bang. Please go ahead. Hi, good morning and thank you for the opportunity. So my first question is in the wires and cables segment. While I understand that last year we had some high cost inventory and therefore probably this quarter the margin has has been a catch up rather, uh, we were expecting slight strong double digit growth in this segment given the strong infra and real estate developments. So can you throw some light there and also give us a sense on the volume growth on a YOI basis? So as far as uh, wires and cables are concerned, uh, you know, the the big impact uh, or the big offtake has been on the underground cable side, which is a smaller business in this category for us, where we are also constrained by capacity uh, till next year, till our new facility comes up. Uh, domestic wire business has done better, and uh, uh, despite the fact that the consumer demand has been weak, uh, which should even do better in the coming times. Uh, as far as the value growth, uh, volume growth is concerned, uh, is about 10% uh, as far as growth. Understood. So, and my second question is on the Lloyd's division. Again, here, while last year was a high cost inventory quarter, inventory quarter for Lloyd's too, so our losses have actually expanded the most if I compare it to any other quarter since FY22 first quarter. And this is given the fact that this was an unseasonal quarter for RAC. So, so just wanted to understand that is it because uh, we continue to do aggressive marketing and uh, so on, that's why there is a strain on margins. And how do we see this margin? moving forward in the midterm 
In fact, as far as Zoid is concerned, we are seeing margin improvements, uh, and this is despite the fact that AC sales are, which is the major business for us, AC sales are the lowest in this quarter. Where we have grown actually better than the average growth of Lloyd uh, uh, in this quarter. Uh, but also, there's a, uh, the fact is that we have also have the second facility now at Street City, which uh, gives us uh, double the capacity. So there has been under-absorption of manufacturing overheads in a low season. But in the coming season, where you know we, uh, where the shocks start going into the distributor shelves in the third quarter and the summer season starts in the fourth quarter, this should start improving. So we will see further margin expansion in Lloyd. Understood. And so lastly, any light on how the premium fan segment did? Premium fan segment, uh, you know, Havels has been the leader in that segment and it's doing well. Overall, fan demand has been weak over the last six months uh, since the energy rating change. But I think uh, going forward, uh, this should improve uh, because there was uh, enough uh, uh, stocks in the market, but I think uh, overall it would improve. Our uh, focus on premium play continues to be strong. All right. Thank you so much, sir. I'll get back in the queue. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ravi Swaminathan from Spark Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, thanks for taking my question. Uh, my first question is in terms of uh, overall consumer uh, demand, especially growth in lighting and fans. Uh, the flattest growth is because of uh, overall market itself growing uh, slowly, or uh, are you seeing increased competition there also? So if you can throw some light. And uh, next 12 months, uh, how do you do you see a recovery in the overall market to double-digit kind of growth? Yeah, I think a uh, uh, combination of things. Uh, I don't see increased competitive intensity. It has always been there in lighting, um, and mm -hmm. it, it will continue to remain. But there will be you know, consolidation towards more branded uh, products in the coming times as well. Uh, in fact, the uh, the major reason for um, the lighting uh, growth not happening is also the fact that the volume growth has been double digits, but the value growth has been uh, quite uh, the price erosion has been quite aggressive. Uh, also, in a hello, uh, Parasman, please stay connected. We seem to have lost the line for the management. Please stay connected while we reconnect the line for the management. Thank you. Parisman, thank you for patiently holding your lines. The line for the management is reconnected. Uh, over to you, sir. Yeah, so sorry for the disconnection. Uh, so I was talking about fans. Overall, the demand has been weak over the last uh, six to nine months. Uh, mm -hmm. And we believe that uh, with the season coming in in the next half, we should start seeing a, a better pickup in the fans' business as well. Got it. And... Uh, in terms of uh, growth in volumes in the cables business, uh, you had mentioned that uh, uh, you had grown by around 10%. Uh, uh, wanted to understand how much would the cable portfolio would have grown, how much would have, the wires portfolio would have grown in terms of volume, uh, how much dependence is there uh, in terms of the infra-led growth, uh, and uh, also, some of the competitors, uh, larger competitors in the cable and wire space had reported 30% growth during this quarter in terms of volume. Hadn't there been for a capacity constraint, would we have grown at similar pace? Yeah, so I think uh, uh, we, we can say that around 40% of our sales come from underground cables where we have capacity constraints. So, yes, of course, if the capacity constraints would, have, would not have been there, we would have done better. Also depends upon uh, the capacity that we are putting up. But as far as wires is concerned, we do not have capacity constraints in wires, and uh, there the growth has been tepid as compared to the industrial uh, products. Uh, 
uh, industrial cables. Okay, and in Swiggy also, how would the bifurcation be towards industrial, uh, real estate, uh, commercial real estate, motor, I mean, and product wise also, if you can do a bifurcation, to be great. So. Uh, we actually don't give this kind of bifurcation in terms of products because there are too many product categories. We have switches, we have domestic switch gear, we have industrial switch gear. Yeah, it will be difficult for us to give a give to this kind of percentage of market on this call. Okay, sure. Sir. But uh, in terms of industrial, uh, industrial, uh, industrial, industrial segment, industrial pickup is better, stronger. Okay. Both residential and consumer segment uh, demand pickup was slow in the second quarter. Got it, sir. Thanks a lot, all the best. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Rahul Agarwal from Ingrid Capital. Please go ahead. Hi, good morning. Thank you for the opportunity. Sir, first question on um, you know second half being better. Uh, just to understand, you know, which are the products which are festival dependent, and uh, is Havels approaching the season differently in terms of you know anything you've done differently in terms of go-to-market channel incentives for you to get better growth in the market? Um, I think. Um... Uh, overall, the kind of products that are uh, dependent upon the festive season are uh, small domestic appliances, uh, washing machines and refrigerators to some extent, but we are not very strong in that segment. Uh, the market shares are small. And of course, lighting. So these three segments um, are dependent upon the festive season. Uh, I think one of the main things what Havels has been able to achieve in the last couple of years is to be only uh, present uh, across channels. Uh, our, we have been traditionally a more dealer distributor oriented company, but over the last couple of years, we have expanded our uh, presence in modern format retail, regional retailers online. So that, uh, I would say that gives us a complete presence and of course, you know, new product launches and, uh, you know, uh, not so much on the trade incentives, but consumer uh, offers continue to come at this time. So which helps, uh, you know, uh, save growth in these categories. Got it, sir. Secondly, on ECD, I think if I look at the first half sale, about 1,600 crores, it's flat YOI. Uh, I understand the reason. Uh, second half last year was also similar, about 1,700 crores, uh, give and take 50 crores. Would you expect uh, 10 to 15 percent YOI growth in second half? Without giving any numbers, we do expect a positive uh, uh, second half. Okay. And lastly, on Lloyd, just wanted to know the full year cash burn. My sense is, uh, you know, given we have a bit numbers, and I think that that also includes depreciation impact. If I remove that, it should be about 200 crores. If you could just help us on that, please. Thank you. No, you you made an estimate. I I would rather leave you to that. So our, our focus on Lloyd in the next half will continue to be on, uh, you know, increasing sales, in, increasing our reach. Uh, market share gains in air conditioner especially uh, and uh, of course continue to spend on brand building efforts R&D and manufacturing so uh, you know here we are very looking at a very long term play because we do believe that we are uh, a much smaller player as compared to the competition in terms of the overall consumer durable category and we do believe this is a huge opportunity for us to be a good uh, you know, uh, they are among the top two or three players in this category. So we will continue to uh, invest in this. I've said it earlier that with with the new manufacturing facilities uh, and the sales growth, our margins will continue to expand in these uh, categories, uh, especially in air conditioners, which is the major category for us. So that should help, uh, you know, uh, cover up, uh, you know, uh, overall margin should expand. Sir, I understand that. So if you would help me with first half number, that should also be fine. First half number is already reported in the num uh, in the thing. I was looking for cash burn, excluding depreciation. Yeah, I think we have given a bit, uh, Rahul. I think let's let's stick to that. Okay, sir. No problem. Thank you so much. All the best. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Siddharth Mehra from Namura. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, hi, sir. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. 
Uh, sir, continuing with the Lloyd, the uh, uh, question on that is that, I mean, the current uh, drop in the uh, margin sequential, is it only to do with the new plant coming up or uh, has there been, been any pricing uh, action or any uh, sort of... No, it's, a, it's, it's a much lower scale as compared to the first quarter, right? So yeah. the margins, uh, margins would get uh, uh, lower because of the uh, uh, underabsorption of manufacturing overheads. And if you if you see why you why it's that that's why there is an improvement there. So I don't think in this you should compare really the QOQ. Yes, but sir, if I look at for uh, over a year for the whole year, if I look at the trends in terms of the improvement over the next few years, uh, apart from the capacity ramping up and probably uh, you getting a better scale, any other factors you think will be supporting us in the margin expansion? See, as we have said that uh, Lloyd is a long-term play, brand building efforts will continue which will definitely improve our consumer perception over a longer period of time. And there will be, you know, as the plants mature, there will be cost uh, rationalizations also. So overall, all these actions put together should help in margin expansion. Okay. And the second question is on the consumer portfolio. You have mentioned that uh, the, uh, we expect the margin improvement uh, led by uh, weaker commodity prices. So, uh, given the growth uh, you are seeing in the multiple segments, do you think uh, uh, you may be required to spend higher uh, on incentives or add and uh, the margin recovery can be slower than what we expect or uh, do you think uh, that should not be an issue? No, I don't think uh, pricing will play a huge role or in trade incentives uh, increase because of the because of uh, uh, you know lower, lower prices or anything but uh, uh, our brand building efforts will continue to continue at the same pace we we've, we've maintained even when the growth was lower so that that should not uh, stop got it and the lastly on this cable and wires so in wires we don't have any capacity constraints so uh, in terms of the channel inventory levels, uh, 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 how is it and should we expect a uh, pickup in the second half or these are the uh, growth trends which we should expect even in the second half? So that should go with the consumer demand offtake and the residential demand offtake. Uh, the channel inventory in at the present moment is normalized. It's not low or anything. It's uh, normalized levels. Okay. Okay, sir. Thanks. I'll come back and listen. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Renu Bed from IIFL Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, good morning, sir. Uh, so my first question is, um, can you elaborate a bit more on the export strategy? Uh, while in such years we had tie-ups with foreign OEMs for white labeling, uh, what are we planning for the RAC segment um, and any other uh, category where we are looking uh, to step up exports? No, I think uh, uh, Renu on the international business, uh, we believe they are fairly macro tailwinds. So everybody is aware. So I think we are we are taking the uh, sort of additional steps, uh, whether in terms of the markets or in terms of products. I think we are getting more and more sort of focused on the same. So I think getting wider and deeper. So RAC definitely we believe is a, is a strong opportunity, both in our own brand and OEM. But these things, uh, as you're aware, will take time because we need also a lot of certification for specific markets. So I think this endeavor has already started. I think with the time, I think you will see sort of certification of the same. So what timeline should we look? Are we looking at a three to five year from today or? Yeah, I think probably I think the, the green should so start I would say in the next uh, sort of 12 to 18 months but the scaling up will require this much of a time horizon what you mentioned. Got it. Uh, secondly within the uh, Lloyd portfolio how is the non-RAC portfolio performing uh, and any inputs you can share on the ref business uh, how is the scale up versus our internal expectations and what are the challenges that you're facing there? Still slow, uh, and second quarter was slow as compared to last year because the festive uh, demand which comes in the second quarter has been shifted to third quarter. Mm -hmm. But uh, right now, I would say that uh, the air conditioner demand in the uh, air conditioner sales were fa faster growth as compared to the reps and washing machines growth. Um, uh, you know, the build up in refrigerators is it per, per expectations? Uh, we actually. Uh, 
not only you know sales is a constraint but also manufacturing is a constraint for us as of now because we are dependent upon outsourcing for this product so over a longer period of time we are we are taking baby steps in this in terms of building uh, network but it is a longer uh, duration play got it um and when we look at the ecd portfolio um channel interaction suggests that broad based schemes and discounting are back in the market uh, which had discontinued during the pandemic um so how do we view the impact of this on the margins given the segment is already facing hyper competitive intensity and um, challenges to take price hikes um so what has been the view here and um, how is the ground consumer of take with respect to acceptance of price hikes uh, in this segment well one of the reasons for the low growth in the first half for the industry has been the price hikes due to the rental prices so hopefully you know if if the discounting or pricing happens that will be in line with the raw materials uh, uh, coming down so i don't see it especially for a company like havels to be you know participating in a <coughs> in something like what trade discounting or anything of that matter because that's not really a long term uh, solution for a company like havels okay and uh, lastly if i can add one thing uh, within the uh, switches it's a part of the switch gear portfolio are we seeing uh, because this market had consolidated over uh, the last 5 uh, 7 years uh, of late last uh, 12 18 months quite a few domestic brands are trying to step up into the segment while they might be very small i am seeing pockets uh, where competitive intensity or price pressures have inched up uh maybe for the standard and the rio brands in the economy segment or some low end of the mass premium market i think it's a very dynamic market and um, you know as you rightly said there are uh, more and more players coming but there are uh, players weakening also so um, but it's also a huge market so yes uh, there are various consumer segments there are various positionings that uh, that are possible to achieve the good thing about havels is that we operate at different brands at different laddering positions and uh, we are able to cater to different consumer uh, segments in this so i think uh, this is a very very important uh, piece of business for us so we operate from very premium uh, consumers to affordable housing as well so uh, that way i think we are well covered um and if i can one more um on a very broad basis if we take a 3 to 4 year view uh, do you see the core profitability of our portfolio x of lloyd uh, those margins improving back closer to mid teen levels um, or because of premiumization portfolio etc or you think there are com- constraints uh, towards uh, that so i think as a as a overall uh, ex lloyd havels uh, had been operating between 13 and a half 13 to 14% and we are, we are now back to those levels uh, except a couple of years where they were uh, unusually higher during the covid period but otherwise we are now back to those levels and we'll continue to strive towards uh, uh, you know making it better um despite the market competitiveness we will continue to strive to make it better by through internal efficiencies and uh, you know market reach so yes that will be a, a strive over the next few years thanks much and all the best team thank you so much thank you the next question is from the line of praveen sahai from prabhudas kilagar please go ahead yeah thank you for taking my question uh, so the first question related to the lighting business sir uh, when do you think this uh, the this deflationary trend in the led lighting to reverse i think it's pretty much bottomed out okay so uh, as you had highlighted double digit of volume growth you had seen in the lighting so the way forward we can uh, see such kind of volume to replicate in the revenue yeah we would expect to see this that kind of a growth okay uh, and the next question is uh, related to the ecd and especially in the fan premium fan segment uh, you don't see any uh, price competitiveness in the premium fan segment as a whole that's a continuous thing you know some some of the brands uh, take to you know newer channels for example online in a very aggressive way but uh, you know these are again i would say short term uh, niggles but uh, you know that's not something which we are too concerned about okay okay so uh, you believe the second half uh, with the festive to coming in 
please uh, reflect in the numbers as well. Hopefully, we are looking at a better consumer uptake in the second half and a better summer season in the uh, in the later part of the second half. Mm -hmm. uh, great. And the last questions are related to the Lloyd, and uh, it's a bit uh, long term. Do you uh, see in the next uh, two to three years your uh, mix of portfolio? product portfolio to change uh, uh, significantly from the current level? I don't think so because, uh, you know, uh, whilst we are expanding the product portfolio to be a con complete consumer durable player uh, uh, with washing machines, refrigerators and LEDs, uh, because of the focus on the, you know, uh, air conditioners where we see a huge opportunity for growth in the coming years. Uh, we don't see a much big shift in, in this overall category because, again, the market shares are very low in the other product category. So, you, you know, when your market shares are actually strong, it gives you a better opportunity for growth as well. So, if you are talking about the next two to three years, I don't see a significant change in the product mix. Great. So, lastly, can you give the CapEx number for this year and the next year? 600. 600 crores for this year. I will announce the next year CapEx at a later date. Thank you, sir. All the best. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Mr. Archul Lohade from GM Financial. Please go ahead. Uh, good morning. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Sir, my first question is, uh, you know, ECB segment minus 5% YOI in terms of you know, I presume very less could be attributed to. Mr. Lohari, we can't really hear you very clearly. If you're on a headset, request you to use the handset. Now? Hello? Yes, sir, go ahead. Sorry for that. Uh, sir, my question is pertaining to ECB business. Uh, minus 5% YY for 2 2 uh, flattage on first half basis. How much of that do you think is? Attributable to the to uh, delay in festival, so would that be less than one percent, or could that be much more than that? So you are we were still breaking the HL, but I think your question was how much is attributable to festival. I think yeah. you know it's it's comprising of uh, fans and appliances. Clearly, fans. I think we you are aware that industry has gone through a shift uh, because of change in the introduction of rather ratings. And I think in the Q1, that uh, impact was pretty visible. And Q2, in any case, you see, because of the summer season uh, sort of fading, I think uh, that impact uh, lingered on. Uh, I, I think the uh, for the festive season, uh, has more profound on the on the small appliances and all, uh, which I think uh, should recover in, in Q3 and, and Q4. So I think we have to segregate Q1 and Q2. Q2 is is largely uh, could be because of festival and appliances. But on the fan side, I think it has been a structural issue, which we believe is now sort of getting pretty washed out. And hopefully in Q3, Q4, you will see organic traction in, in that segment. Um, the second question I had was with respect to pricing. You know, if you could help us understand if there was any price uh, cut, uh, stroke, uh, you know, discounting. Uh, which plays out in uh, uh, 2Q, and uh, if anything is announced for 3Q. No, there has not been any price discounting. You see, there so, or probably the pricing prices is uh, uh, the realization of stable across categories, yes, sir. Uh, including ECs. Is, is that right, sir? Yeah. Okay. And just one more question. Uh, you know, KPEX 600 cost, can you uh, uh, help us understand the big topic segment which is growing? How much and what kind of revenue can we see from uh, this KPEX in terms of asset? I think that actually we have clarified earlier also. Maybe you can connect with the IER separately and we can give you that. No problem. And just last uh, uh, question, if I may, sir, with respect to fixed costs, you know, given the scale we have seen uh, increase, uh, you know, um, I thought we will, we will have a benefit of the operating leverage kicking in, but we see if we look at the employee cost or the unallocable expenses as well, it continues to rise. I understand you continue to invest, but um, from a next couple of years perspective, uh, you know, uh, how much operating leverage uh, can we see in terms of the margins? Would this be closer to 100 basis point if the uh, revenue growth is in double digit? Look, quantification may be difficult, but clearly, I think operating leverage will kick in. Uh, I think we do expect that at times we are not building organization for 8-10% growth. 
so hopefully i think these things will kick in um, but look investments in manpower infrastructure it i think these are for fairly long term so i think sometime i think just lots to go on the quarters and and try to sort of you see extrapolate that so i think this will definitely kick in give it some time got it sir thank you and wish you all the best thank you the next question is from the line of bhavin vithlani from sbi mutual fund please go ahead good morning gentlemen um uh, see the first question is a continuation uh, to what the previous participant was asking so on a 6% revenue growth we have seen 22% growth in the employee cost in this quarter so if you could just help us understand your thought process uh, i mean how much of this is a uh, new addition and the kind of growth that you are anticipating uh, anticipating and how much of this was uh, repricing because covid had actually suppressed some of this and you are bringing it up to speed on the market levels so i think it will be a mix of mix of uh, uh, so sort of everything what you said i don't know covid is still there i think but definitely from the covid time things have gone you are also aware how cost how inflation is building to everything and when you see employee cost is also into cost related to travel and all and everybody is aware you see how things have really spiraled up at least in over last year so i think these are all all baked in there and look havels is also uh, simultaneously working on lot of new initiatives as well you see we do know that reflected you see if you are a startup you can show you are you are developing something and that gets reflected in your losses to investment but that something we keep sort of doing on a regular basis so i think there a lot of investment into see our research and development uh, you see into the digitization and digitization uh, into it infrastructure so these things uh, i think it makes sense to put them into into the pn and one could argue these are really maybe capital investments for for a longer period and these are the conscious uh, choices your management management has made and uh, we all believe that uh, as i said to the earlier participant uh, the organization is not built for 6 or 10% growth so when the growth i think which we are very hopeful as a country and as a company we both believe in the see the potential uh, so i think we continue to sort of trust in that and continue to invest behind that as i said don't pick up a quarter and then sort of start sort of you see ruminating about that sure uh, the second question is uh, uh, you highlighted capacity constraints in cables which is 40% of the cables and wires um, um is there are there all capacity constraints uh, also in this switch gear portfolio because they are also uh given the way we are seeing real estate launches and the growth by real estate players uh, uh a 9% growth seems subpar to us so if you can just help us understand uh, a bit more on the switch gear piece uh, is there capacity constraint are the uh, are the competitive dynamics which has resulted in loss in share uh, it'll be helpful to understand no there is no capacity constraint uh, uh but i think uh, when you say the real estate launches there a lot of things are announced but i think it takes time for them to come on the ground and uh, so uh, if you look at industrial switch gear the growth has been good on the residential side growth has been slightly uh, slightly muted so uh, these things uh, again we 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 are expecting them uh, you see to to going forward to get better but as far as the capacity is all scattered at least in switch gear you see we do not have any constraint and uh, the only constraint as of now we speak is on the cable side right okay. uh, so uh, and when i look at the past 5 years i think you've done little over 2000 crores of capex and uh, lloyds has taken a lion share of uh, almost 55% of that uh, is it that uh, maybe the attention has got uh, Uh, diverted uh, too much uh, towards lloyds that uh, we've kind of uh, neglected the existing business because a good company like yours is supposed to anticipate growth better and plan better and not have capacity constrained as uh, letting go of growth as a reason it looks sometimes what happen you make choices uh, if you if you i don't know how long you have been connected with havers but in the past we we have said that we are gravitating more towards b to c so i think one one takes those calls so when when and these cycles will continue to happen so yes i think this could have been we could have taken it two years back but i don't think it's fair to assume that is happening at the expense of lloyd or because of lloyd i think uh, that would have make everybody where should have a capacity constraint 
sometimes yes you do get you do to get caught uh, you see off guard on that but we have been focusing on on b2c and that has been uh, the trend uh, in have so so these these things look do happen you you learn from that and you move on that's how the south of companies operate over a longer period of time short sure. just a last question from my side in the ecd uh, i think mean, quarter 1 being the largest quarter there were unseasonal rains and also channel was loaded up with the earlier uh, energy rating uh, inventory if you could just help us understand has that been cleaned up now and are we now seeing the growth pick up uh, a little bit uh, more forward looking cover consumer demand has been muted i'm sure you guys follow fmcg today hindustan lever results also came so everybody know the consumer has been sort of there has been stress there so they the uh, that may be on the channel side these stock they are these stocking because they are also realizing there is not too much demand the fresh pick up is not there which is healthy so maybe it could have taken one quarter it has not taken two quarters so uh, definitely i think uh, that these stocking will help us in the uh, quarters going forward great sir yeah. sir yeah. thank you so much for taking my questions thank you before we take the next question we'd like to request participants that in order to ensure that the management is able to address questions from all participants at the conference please limit your questions to two per participant you may rejoin the queue for follow up questions we'll take the next question from the line of ashish jain from macquarie please go ahead hello Hi sir, uh, sir. Good morning. So my first question is on the uh, Lloyd's business. So you know, I understand the growth focus and you know that it could be a drag on margins. But even on the contribution margin side, you know, like last year we were talking about touching closer to 10% margins and all. We are far from that. So any sense on contribution margins that should we think uh, will improve from here with commodities coming off and all, or that also will remain in this mid single digit kind of range? Oh, I think the uh, you see the endeavor is definitely towards that, and that is that number was more when when the season is there. So let's say Q4, I think you will see uh, somewhere around that. But I think, and this is something I think which will as the uh, as we also you see now when new facilities also come up, you know these takes in time to fill up. So I think that's something I think which will continue to uh, grow, and then I think as the RM. we are seeing the softening uh, that effect will also be there so yes i think uh, our, our sort of goal post has been moved it continues to be there and i think that's something as you said we see the gradual improvement there and that's something i think we expect to achieve right right and then secondly you know uh, uh, apart from cables and wires can you uh, uh, comment if you have gained or lost market share in you know switches lighting uh, all these let's say in the last 12 months or so any you know distinct trend which is there in terms of market share no 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 ashish we we have not witnessed any uh, if at all i think we would have uh, in lighting and all we would have gained market share but let's say i think to your specific question no we have not lost Okay, okay. In none of the categories, right? Okay, great. Thank you so much, sir. Thanks. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Atul Tiwari from City Group. Please go ahead. Yeah, sir. Uh, could you give some color on the revenue compensation of Lloyd's business? Uh, what percentage is from AC uh, and the other key pillar category? Yeah, so this quarter, Atul, it will be uh, AC is fifty percent and other fifty percent. And which are the key items in other? So, so other we, we we have largely washing machine and and refrigerator. And roughly equally uh, in like fifty percent or one dominates the other mm-hmm. between washing machine and refrigerator. So I think what we are let's say stick to AC fifty percent, other fifty percent. Okay, thank thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Shubham Agarwal from Axis Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, Shivam, we can't hear you very clearly. If you're on a hands-free, request you to use the handset. Yeah, am I audible now? Yes, much better. Please go ahead. Okay, great. Uh, so, thanks for the opportunity. Just wanted to uh, so this first question is on the ECD segment. Uh, so the margins in the ECD segment are sub 12 percent right now. FI 20. The margin was somewhere close to 14%. I just wanted to check, you know, 
is 12 to 13 percent the new normal because of the increase in competition or do we think that the margins will inch back up to 14 percent in q and now going ahead into h2 also the margins will improve for the ecd segment yeah so i think if you recall uh, uh, uh late was asked about the havels x lloyd margins and he right. said ki we are now sort of coming back uh, to our earlier uh, numbers uh, right somebody said you could be uh, mid teens also so i think we said that that's the sort of endeavor for havels so i think ecd is a, is a, is a important piece uh, of of havels business so we believe i think those margins which we had done in in 2020 i think is something what we are inching towards and it should be possible because there has been a lot of volatility since then. You see, for late it was COVID. Then you see post uh, COVID recovery, there was a huge flare up in the commodity cost and things like that. So we believe uh, as the things get much more cleaner uh, going forward in a fresh base, I think we we are inching towards our our margins. You see, have as a whole, I'm saying excellent. Okay, so great. Uh, second question on the lighting segment. First, I wanted to congratulate that you maintained margins despite the price erosion uh, in the segment. So the margins have been strong. Uh, congrats on that. And the question was, sir, you know, what percentage of the lighting portfolio would be professional lighting? And if you could give a trend that how was it in 2020 and how is it now? Let's just go to five years back and how is it now? That's my second. 60% will be uh, consumer and 40, but you know, this is also get led by the consumer has been slightly muted and uh, on the professional level there has been some good tailwind, basically. So, but past, I think it will be like 70, 30, 65, 35, you see. So I think that has improved in favor of uh, PLUM, professional engineers. Okay, that's all. Thank you so much for the answers. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Isha from VT Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, hello, good morning, sir. So I wanted to understand your strategy on the ad spend. Like for this particular quarter, we, we have seen a significant decrease. And uh, last year, same quarter, again, we saw the decline compared to Q1. So can you please help me understand what is your strategy behind it? So the strategy is very simple. It uh, goes with over a period of time. So there is one is impact advertising, the other is frequency. Impact advertising happens more during the season time. So we have two major seasons. One is in the first quarter, which is the summer season, and then the festive season. So this, uh, uh, so there we we see a higher uh, gain of advertising spends in the first quarter and the third quarter, and the second quarter and fourth quarter are usually lower. Overall, we maintain that we will be around two and a half to three percent of the revenues in terms of advertising spend. Okay, and uh, so the other question is on the uh, price revision. So, just wanted your idea that uh, in further quarters, what are our thought process on the price revision? Are we going to see any price cuts given the commodity price settling? So, uh, any thought process? So there are certain adjustments which happen for certain product categories like lighting, uh, if the price erosion is there, we adjust the prices. Cables and wires definitely go along with the commodity prices. But, uh, uh, you know, we are quite dynamic in terms of pricing as for the cost of the product is concerned. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Alok Deshpande from Nuwama. Please go ahead. Good morning, gentlemen. So, uh, first question is on the capacity expansion that's happening on the cables, uh, cables business. Uh, so, could you give us a sense on, uh, you know, uh, what would be the quantum of this capacity expansion compared to what we have currently? Yeah. Almost, I think, 35% will be expansion. 25%. Uh, cable expansion. Okay, and, and currently cables would be about uh, uh, how how much would be the cables in the current uh, current sales? I mean, almost forty percent. Okay, so this forty percent will get uh, enhanced by twenty five percent, is what you say? Yeah. And and some yeah, and something will be in domestic wires as well. So oh. 
Okay, okay, understood, sir. And uh, and similarly, sir, um, when you think about the Lloyd business, uh, I mean, currently, you know, last year we had three and a half thousand crores of that business. This year, probably four thousand crores. I mean, from a capacity perspective, currently the underutilization that's happening in off season, etc. Uh, what would be the capacity? I mean, what would be the revenue sort of uh, level this capacity is built for currently, whatever we have? Any any ballpark number? Or, I mean, what is the? I think we should we should serve us up to uh, maybe almost double of this turnover. Or double of Lloyd's turnover, that is. Yeah. Okay, understood. Okay, okay. Thank you, thank you so much. Sir. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Amit Mahavar from UBS. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, thank you. Uh, this question is due to Anil Ji. Uh, sir, the uh, first question is, uh, you've been talking about uh, talent uh, you know, uh, acquisition, and we've done a lot of that in the last couple of years as the business uh, expands uh, you know, to multiple SBUs. Uh, how relevant is uh, it for Havels to have a professional CEO, uh, you know, and how soon uh, should we see that? That's my first question. Thank you. I mean, I think that's a very profound question. I think uh, I, I don't think it can be really discussed on the quarterly call. And uh, the the, uh, the pace of professionalism is only sort of enhanced. And I think just because a promoter is there, uh, you see, I don't think one should assume that professional is not there. So, so I think that that journey is, is something you see, which is only rapidly expanding in in Havels. I don't think anybody can claim that uh, Havels is not a professional organization. So, to that extent, uh, I'm not sure where your question is coming from. Okay, no, I was just uh, trying to understand, you know, I think in the past uh, discussions, uh, we've spoken about the ultimate journey of, you know, uh, you know how the talents have been coming to Havels. And uh, so, I was just trying to understand if that's a thought in the near to medium term. The person I meet in this company is a CEO. That's how this company is run. That's how the empowerment works in this company. He is not the only one who is the chairman. You see, every every business head in this company, every person in the factory, every person in the functions, every sales person in this company is CEO. Every person is ARG here. Uh, fair point, sir. Thank you for that. And second and last question is, uh, we've seen in uh, kitchen, uh, you know, and small appliances, which is a very big market, but a tough one. Uh, you know, organic expansions uh, have been very hard to come by. We've seen some of the peers like Crompton or Bajaj, et cetera, you know, going for an organic suit there. So, uh, you know, where are we on that thought uh, in the kitchen portfolio? Sir? That's my last question. Thank you. you no, know, kitchen portfolio is expanding. And I think uh, uh, when we when we introduce them to the market, I think we will inform them. But uh, I think that portfolio is sort of expanding the mostly on a rapidly basis. Because we believe kitchen is a very important segment of the homes uh, going forward. Mm. Thank you, sir, and good luck to the entire team. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Keur Pandya from ICSA Prudential Life Insurance. Please go ahead. Uh, sir, first question is on uh, Lloyd. So as you talked about uh, margin expansion led by say, higher sales or operating leverage, uh, just on the margin front, so uh, uh, what are the other levers, either say, cost optimization uh, or say, gross profit side, uh, uh, or price increases, uh, or say, normalization of uh, uh, channel margins. Basically, other than operating leverage, what are the levers for margin expansion? And think that, and, and, and just to add to that, washing machine and ref uh, as a category are higher margin products than AC. No, so I think uh, we, I've already answered this question in the past uh, that the, the levers are raw material prices abating, uh, higher operating leverage in manufacturing, um, brand positioning and, and hence price improvement in the market. But these are all medium term plays. Okay, okay. In this last question, uh, the press release also mentions about incorporation of subsidiary in USA. Uh, for any specific product, or uh, uh, if you can just throw more light on uh, the purpose of the subsidies. Look, these are enabling uh, provisions. Uh, again, somebody asked this question about our international strategy, uh, and we said we are uh, looking uh, some strong macro tailwinds. I think we need to be prepared uh, for uh, for the actions on that. 
So I think this is enabling the resolution and the approval we have sought from the board since we had a board meeting. And I think as we as we sort of operationalize it, I think we'll we'll keep the uh, keep you informed. Sure. Thank you, and all the best. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Latika Chopra from J.P. Morgan. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, the first question is, uh, you know, you have uh, commented quite a few times that you're hopeful that, you know, B2C demand is going to revive in the second half. Uh, are there any uh, reasons or any signs which are eluding you to have this kind of confidence? Uh, when you exited the September quarter, did you see any pockets which... Uh, promised you some sort of recovery or some change in consumer behavior. And more importantly, as a company, what would, in your view, actually drive the consumer to come out and you know spend on uh, electrical goods? That's the first question. So I would say two things. Uh, one to your question, because we saw some uh, green shoots in the second half of the second quarter. Yes, we did see something. Uh, it's difficult to say. It's difficult to say whether it's you know, permanent or is it uh, temporary. But uh, you know, more importantly to your second part of the question, what will help the consumer pick up more is definitely the uh, residential demand picking up, uh, residential construction picking up uh, in reality. And second, uh, and most importantly, with this uh, inflation, you know, uh, coming down to normalized levels. I think that will propel the consumer to come out and uh, buy more. Uh, so we, you know, that's why we are a bit more hopeful of the second half because the commodity prices have stabilized over the last six months or so. And uh, uh, you know, in this electrical industry, the first half, the kind of growth that we see in the first half is also something which has uh, not been normal, and uh, also is related to you know some of the core categories like fans not having a great summer. Uh, going through its own challenges of the industry. So, overall, many reasons for uh, us being positive about the second half. Sure. The second bit was, uh, you know, around uh, the fact that, uh, you know, you mentioned in, in somewhere during the call that, you know, you chose to be more B2C focused, and uh, I completely understand that. But is there now a change in thought that probably you need to have a more balanced? Uh, exposure towards B2B and B2C, and given the kind of capacity addition plans that you have, uh, that is one. And the second bit, I was actually thinking, you know, when you were commenting on competition and pricing, uh, you know, in category like air conditioners, you know, we did see the market leaders' margins actually coming down meaningfully. Do you see that risk at any point as you find more challenges in your uh, B2C categories uh, in, in small appliances or ECB? Just any broad thoughts there. Thank you so much. Right. So I, uh, as far as um, um, the industrial, the B2B side is concerned, I think uh, where we've seen constraints is on the cable side. We have grown well on the industrial switch care side, though our market share is uh, smaller. Uh, professional luminaires, we are doing extremely well, um, uh, you know, despite having a uh, quite good uh, position amongst the top three positions in this uh, industry. So um, it's not that see, the focus has completely changed towards B2C. It's always been there. It's as Mr. Rajiv Goel mentioned, that there are certain times you take certain decisions, maybe certain could be delayed decisions as well. So uh, the fact is that we will continue to strive towards being a good balance between B2C and B2B. Uh, as far as the uh, second question, second question what is there on the uh, uh, so on, like you mentioned, uh, you know, the market leader in air conditioner. I think uh, one of the reasons in the past one year has also been, you know, unprecedented increase in the cost of the product as well. So we do believe, uh, you know, with that coming down, and Havel has proven over the last 10, 15 years that our margins have been stable. This, uh, except uh, the last one or two years of uh, COVID and uh, um, volatility in commodities. Otherwise, we have been able to maintain our margins, and that hopefully we should continue in the future as well. Thank you so much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Natasha Jain from Nirmal Bang. Please go ahead. 
thank you for the follow up sir i just had one uh, question upon a follow up question rather than what one of the previous participants asked so in the switches and switch care now all these ancillary products seem to not be doing so well compared to how the real estate or the housing market is doing so specifically to switch care and which is do you think this market is still dominated by local or unorganized players because uh, you know some of our channel checks do suggest that that these unorganized players have been getting a good growth so how do you see this sir? Well, i think if you do uh, switch care parts one is the residential uh, industrial switch care and within residential switch care there is uh, residential circuit protection and uh, switches and sockets so i would say that the uh, unorganized uh, sector is now only in the switches and sockets not in the residential switch care and the industrial switch care so that is uh, reflecting the uh, actual offtake of the real estate uh, uh, position in the market the switches and sockets definitely uh, there is a lot of unorganized competition as well but that also in the next few years should start getting consolidated with more and more consumer Uh, getting attracted towards brands, I think that is also a segment which will get uh, more consolidated. Understood. And lastly, sir, how has your growth been in your weaker markets like Eastern and Western India? Uh, so I would not say Eastern is a, a weaker market for us. Our market shares are smaller in Western part of India. There, the growth is definitely faster than uh, the other strong markets that we have. All right. Thank you so much, sir, and all the best. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Rahul Agarwal from Incred Capital. Please go ahead. Thank you for the follow up, uh, Rajiv ji. One question was on insurance claim. Uh, the 59 crores received, where was that accounted? Uh, you know, we have created a claim uh, when we filed the claim, so it has been adjusted against the uh, basically correct letter, letter, the receivable. Okay, so no, no, it's not flowing through the PNL, right? And no, the same no. thing will happen for the balance sixteen crores, right? It's not going to the PNL, so the provision continues to remain uh, for the balance sixteen, seventeen crore, whatever it is. Perfect, sir. Any thoughts on commercial AC? Yeah, I think everything is in offering. With as you say, wait, watch out for this space. Okay, perfect, sir. Thank you so much. All the best. Thank you. Thank you very much. We'll have to take that as the last question. I would now like to hand the conference back to the management team for closing comments. Oh, thank you everybody for joining the call, and we wish you uh, a very happy Diwali to everyone, and look forward to see uh, to a great Q3 and Q4. Thank you. Thank you very much. On behalf of ICICI Securities, that concludes the conference. Thank you for joining us, ladies and gentlemen. You may now disconnect your lines.